I have been an iOS user for 10 years or more, solidly. I'm sure you've seen a plethora of videos recently about switching to foldables and moving on from Apple. And I just want to be clear that I'm a genuine case. This phone is bought with my own money and it's going to last me for the next two years or more. So if you want a genuine real life experience of what it's like swapping from iOS to Android, this might be the video for you. So this is how I've set up my screen. I think the stock Samsung launcher is missing a trick, to be honest. You can only get five or six icons, and I think when the screen is this big, it's just a waste. So I've downloaded Nova Launcher, and I now have 10 beautiful tiny icons and two screens only. I have this cool parallax sort of wallpaper, which also looks really good on the front screen. And I just think the 10 by 10 icons make the most sense because you've got so much screen real estate, you may as well use it. They do appear slightly smaller on the front screen and you do need a little bit of muscle memory in order to use it in both scenarios. But after a day or two, I found that I remembered where everything was. And if I do get stuck at any point, I can always just swipe up and search. And one thing that I found quite lacking on iOS is widgets. I know there are a few in the recent iterations of iOS, but there's nothing quite like having the customization options that we have on Android. I have a lovely see-through calendar widget, which shows me my next few days. And on the other side, I have a to-do list, which is very imaginatively named to-do list, which is the app that I use. And it enables me to have the transparent background so I can still see my childish, silly wallpaper. <laughs> So let's talk about the hardware and just day-to-day -day life with a foldable. I found compatibility very, very good. I have tested around 100 apps and there's only one app that has not been compatible with the full screen, which I'll talk about in a bit. I've found, as other people have said, that when you are looking at the screen, the crease disappears, so don't let that put you off. The only time you ever really notice it is if the light hits it or you've got the screen very, very dim. But I think it's a very small price to pay for the screen real estate. On the whole, content, consumption, YouTube videos, things like that just look brilliant. Now, we do have a split keyboard on the main big screen, and I think I'm uniquely suited to just getting on board with this straight away because this is the keyboard that I use in my day-to-day -day life. So physically holding the phone is a little bit of a learning curve. On the left-hand side, which is how I would usually hold a phone, it feels a little bit less fun. On the right-hand side, it feels quite nice. You've got a really nice grip. But what you will notice, and what a lot of people don't realize until they have a foldable in their hand, is it's not quite like a tablet experience because you do have half glass and you are touching glass a lot of the time. So it is something to get used to and something to bear in mind. Another thing to bear in mind is some apps, like one of my very favorite games in the world, Brotato, obviously, it loads in this orientation. So you have the glass at the bottom. And that means when you are playing it, so your thumb would be over here, you are holding the glass screen at the bottom. And some apps, you just have to roll with whichever orientation they give you, you can't change it. And that's something that's a little bit strange for me because I was expecting maybe I could have a DS-like clamshell experience for gaming or just a tablet experience. And having the glass involved in a lot of these sort of scenarios is a little bit weird. It's not the end of the world, but just bear in mind that your front screen will get a little bit grim. <laughs> because you are holding it and touching it a lot more than you usually would. If you have tiny hands, I would highly recommend this case. I have the S Pen case as well, which I think is really nice. I tend to gravitate towards this one because there's no sensible place to put a pop socket or anything. And just if I've got tinier hands, it's the best way to deal with it. And if I'm out and about and I'm in the closed mode, it's actually such a tactile, nice, safe experience to be sort of navigating uh, Google Maps or taking photographs as a tourist. And you've just got absolutely a full grip on it. And it's really, really good. Feels much more secure in my hand than my Apple phones. So life organization, this is something that I use my mobile devices for a heck of a lot. With the full screen, you can have a full view of your calendar, your daily hourly blocks with no compromise. Things like Milanote, Notion look absolutely wonderful. In fact, I'm using Notion right now as my script. 
and it looks just like it would on the desktop whereas on the Apple device it's very much a more limited experience because the screen is so small. So let's talk a little bit more about closed mode. I might be the only person in the world that really likes the tinier narrower screen. I like that because I have smaller hands I can hold it very well and I can truly type one-handed on it or two-handed absolutely fine. Never in recent years because I tend to have the iPhone Max phones. I don't have a one-handed experience. Sometimes if I've got my hands full I'm literally like typing things with my nose to sort of say yes to things because I can't have a one-handed experience with the larger phones. With this it's absolutely the best of both worlds because I've got the very nice neat narrow screen to be getting on with for quick tasks and then I can open it up and I've got the larger screen for things that are a little bit more heavy. You can also instantly swap from one to the other on every app that I've tried I think so it's really really intuitive and fast. But what about airdrop? I hear you ask, well, this was the biggest thing for me and the biggest friction that I was expecting to have. However, I have a free solution for AirDrop that actually works. It's an app called Tailscale, which is sort of a VPN between all of your devices. And with this app, you can share in both directions just using Wi Fi very quickly. It is not as streamlined as AirDrop in the sense that if I'm copying over 10 photos, it'll work first time. If I'm copying over 50 photos, I might have to do it in batches of 10. Yay, there is a workaround, and I don't think it's a workaround that a lot of people know. Like, I was furiously Googling this and came up with all kinds of weird apps, and none of them worked, or some of them only work one way. This works both ways, and it's free. Tail scale. Switching from iOS. This is probably the biggest barrier. I think people think it's a very daunting and stressful task, and yes, it can be. There are a few things to make it easier. The biggest one and the most important one is making sure you have a password vault that isn't tied to Apple or Android. I use one password, hashtag not sponsored, other ones are available, and all you need to do is copy your Apple vault into one password and then when you install that on Android, in theory, all of your passwords will copy over. And that's perfect, dead seamless, no problems, right? Wrong. Some apps on Android won't allow you to have the pop-up, so sometimes you have to type things in manually to begin with and then it will save. It's a little bit more of a pain in the backside than I was anticipating, but at the very least you know that you have your passwords safe, independently of which operating system you're on if you have a third-party password manager. Given that my Android experience in the past was quite dated, you know, pretty dated, I was expecting the worst. 2012 Android was like, some of the apps were crippled, some of them weren't as feature rich, some of them weren't there at all. This whole experience has been completely night and day to my previous Android experience. Everything works in basically the same way. I've found nothing overly different from Apple to Android now. Everything has worked really well. If you've had an older experience of Android, wipe that from your memory. Everything is working great now in 2023. Gaming. I love gaming as you can tell on this channel and I must admit having the larger screen was a big draw to me for wanting to change. I love the big screen, it's vibrant, it's responsive, it's wonderful. Certain games just look epic on this screen. I've also been using really chill games like Alto and also I've got Minecraft. I think there's a lot more ports on Android compared to iOS and of course we have emulation. I've got I can never say this. Do I shoot? Do I? I've got this. And having the nice non crippled file system in Android means you can just put your ROMs in a folder and it works very quickly and intuitive for emulation. And another big draw for me to move over to Android was my Rocket Max AR glasses, which notoriously don't work on iPhone without a lot of workarounds and a lot of headache, if at all. So I'm very happy to say my Rocket Max glasses work perfectly out of the box with my lovely new Fold 5. Remember that one app that wasn't working big screen? It's the Rocket Max app, of course it is. There are a few benefits of having your Rocket Max with Android. So you can pin windows in AR space, for instance. I'll have a full video or two on the channel, which I'll link somewhere. Now I'm really honestly thinking, do I need my iPad mini anymore? As much as I love it, and I do, this does everything that I wanted the iPad mini for. It's my media station, my Rocket Max. I've got the pencil and the S Pen. The does anyone want to buy an iPad mini? <laughs> so what will I miss? It's not all roses. 
I'm not saying everyone should jump ship and never touch an Apple product again because I run a lot of my life through Apple and I love them. There's pros and cons to but Here is what I will miss. My AirTags. I'm so salty that I have to buy Samsung AirTags now. My Samsung phone will recognize my Apple AirTags and just tell me that I've got one on it. On me but not allow me to do anything else hi dog so yeah really annoyed that that's not compatible and you do need to think about things like i've had to buy the android watch i'm going to have to buy the AirTag equivalents you've got to sort of pick a team and some of that can involve a little bit of investment i've got this annoying thing at the moment with outlook in gmail where if i delete an email five minutes later it comes back like a spooky little ghost if anyone knows how to fix that please let me know in the comments and another thing that i do miss is the silly little bubble numbered notifications on android all your notifications are on the top shelf rather than on the apps i'm sure there is a way to do it but using nova launcher i don't think i can with the way that i've set my phone up and it's great because it stops me from being hounded by the bubbles of doom and wanting to clear them all but sometimes i feel like i do miss important things because i don't see the notifications as clearly but here are some things i won't miss i won't miss the boring layout that never changes in iOS from year to year. It honestly feels so dated after using the foldable for a while. I won't miss my battery dying at 4pm every day because I dared to have a phone that was over two years old. And I certainly won't miss paying £9 a month for the privilege of being able to take my photographs off my phone into my computer. I really hate how limiting the Apple software is unless you use iCloud or i tunes or iPhoto. You know what I mean? You can't just stick it in and drag them off. It's really irritating. <laughs> and I really won't miss that whenever I have my AirPod Pros in and I'm sort of editing a video and I pick up my iPhone, the AirPods automatically sync to my phone and it really annoys me. <laughs> I haven't got my Samsung Buds yet, they may do exactly the same thing, so take that with a pinch of salt. So, expect a headache for the first week. I would highly, highly recommend keeping your old phone with you in case there are important passwords or things that you forgot to sort of transfer over, if that's at all possible. Expect to fall in love with some innovative and different hardware. If you're coming from the same old iPhone, it really is a joy to try something different. Probably expect to fall in love with the customization and waste hours of your life setting up your games and your wallpapers and getting your phone exactly how you want it. And if those things sound appealing to you, then the swap will work. I think now iPhone is for people that want the technology to get out of the way. It's just there, it's, it works, it's frictionless, but it's kind of boring. I think Android is for someone who wants to customize everything and tailor their experience and really enjoy the technology. Like, I, I think getting a new phone should be like Christmas day. It shouldn't be like, oh, it's basically the same as last year, but now the camera is slightly better. I want it to look different. I want it to be personalized to me. And if you love technology, you will not regret switching. If you're not too fussed about technology and just want things to work, then stick with Apple. They're both brilliant and I'm definitely not bashing one or the other. They are both brilliant and it's really a privilege that we get to choose. Watch these videos next and check out some more on my channel. And thank you so much to listening to me waffle for so long about my phone, but I'm really excited. It's nice to be excited about phones again, honestly.